folks, does God need to be reasonable? We need to be reasonable, seemingly, in our actions. How do we view God? Does he need to be reasonable? Well, maybe he is reasonable, but that does he need to be reasonable? That's a good question. In regards to all of the five de degrees of separation that there is in the human condition and in the person, that the highest level is intelligence, Chachma in particular, wisdom, that's the greatest um, power that we have, force of vitality within the soul. Of course, that gives rise, emerges from there, emotions. From emotions comes thought. You think about that which you have a feeling and a strong feeling about. And you have a feeling about something based on how you perceive it. Then that thought will lead you to speak about that which you have, that which you think about. And of course, you're going to act upon it uh, as a result. So we have five degrees of separation in each form of vitality of the soul, the highest being Chachma, the lowest being action. A little child takes action. You know, I was a grandchild over Shabbos and just saw how they're looking at the other older kid, as a matter of fact, older grandchild that they're playing with. I just grab something. Taking action. That's a simple act to do. It's a lot more difficult to um, verbalize something. That child wasn't yet verbal because the power, the power of the soul is incomparably greater than the power of action of the soul. And each level is incomparable one to the other, right? How about God? Well, in relation to God, there's also wisdom, right? Chachma, Chachma Vatsilos. And of every world, there is divine wisdom. That level of divine wisdom in relation to God is like the level of action. In other words, it's also very removed. Just as action for us, not the effect of action and how it has on others and the importance of action, of course, it's very important. And whatever we uh, perceive and feel and speak and think and speak should be brought to action. Absolutely, doing a mitzvah to be brought to action. But we're talking about now that power of the soul. So for us, intelligence, phew, compared to action, myriads apart, very much removed the quality. For God, wisdom is considered as if it's the quality of action. As it says in the verse in Tehillim and Psalms, Kulam b'chachma zisa, that you have made them all with wisdom. You make, you don't make with wisdom. You make, figuratively speaking, with your hands. You don't, you know, with your wisdom, you intellect. But yet, wisdom is like an action for God. In other words, just as for us, it's so far removed. Before God, it's also so far removed. the life force of divine wisdom. For us, it's the beginning. For God, in a sense, it's... <laughs> in a sense, it's the end. In other words, God is infinitely removed beyond even divine wisdom, His wisdom. And therefore, comparable to Him, it's incomparable. What does that mean? So the alternative doesn't say this here, but I'm saying this parenthetically. It means God doesn't need to, to be reasonable. He's not limited 
by intellect. He's not defined by it. God is no thing. He's not a thing. Wisdom is a thing. Divine emotions is a thing. Divine thought is a thing. Divine speech is a thing. All of them are things and therefore relative to God who is no thing, meaning he is beyond any definition, any form of a parameter that limits him in any manner. So when it comes to divine wisdom, he's infinitely removed from it. Divine wisdom, his wisdom. I'm not talking about my wisdom, right? His wisdom. Infinitely beyond it, exalted beyond it. So he created intelligence, therefore he's not limited by intelligence. 